Hey everyone, welcome to the Good News Podcast. And as we started to think about Black History Month and wanted to have some guests that could really speak into some of the issues that we thought were important around this this conversation, man, Garnet Manning was somebody who was at the top of that list. And I am so glad that Garnet was able to have this conversation. Garnet is one of the most positive people I've ever met. He's got a ton of energy. He's a man of great faith. He's he's just an exceptional leader. You're gonna hear all that more behind what we have to say in this conversation. Let's dive in, get ready to enjoy an amazing conversation. Well, welcome everybody to the Good News Podcast. Uh, delighted to have you and delighted to have my good friend, Garnet Manning. Many of you will know Garnet. Garnet has been involved in the city of Brampton for, for many years. He is a, a phenomenal speaker and an incredible communicator. He, he speaks in lots of different places about lots of different topics. He is really, truly a community leader. He has been on our city council, and I still remember when he served in that way and his impact is still brings brings a, a great change to our city today. So Garnet, I mean, I go on and on, you, you, you know, I know you're not that kind of guy. You don't want me to talk too much about you. I get it. I know. I love your humility. Yeah. I love who you are, <laughs> but maybe just to jump in here, if we could, um, w- of all the roles that you've been playing over the years, what, what are some of your favorite roles and uh, that you've got to play and things that you've done and why, why is that? Thank you so much. It's again, Pastor Jamie, you know, the respect is mutual. The love is mutual. And, we go back a long way, go back a long way before I had these and before you have <laughs> some of that. And just the connection was really for your love for the community and my involvement and love for the community. So the answer to your question really flows within that same vein yeah. is that <clears throat> being involved, like I look back at 2003, 16 years ago, I ran for city council because I had a passion to see changes in city. I left, uh, you'd say, politics as an elected official in 2006, mm. but continue consistently working in the community and engage in the community of Brampton. I don't think I've skipped a beat, and I look back and say, you know, why? But so... To answer your question, really, is just a consistent engagement in the city of Brampton, trying to actually see, you know, the joy of seeing some of the things that I started out with, Mm. that I run uh, on as a platform, the desire, seeing some of them come into fruition, even being out of office because of the consistent involvement in the city of Brampton. Just quickly before I to continue to answer the question is, you know, you started, I started out by heading initiatives and engaging the community. Today it's been evolved now to where I'm kind of viewed as an elder now. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's more of a mentorship role and more people coming to me for advice and just to see so many of the young people that I've known back in the day grown to be so brilliant and are leading the fray in making changes in the community. Mm. I love it. That that's uh, that says so much about who you are that you don't need to be the one in the limelight like to to see others and and I you know we were just talking before we started Agarn and I, I that's that's one of the beautiful one of the many beautiful things yeah. I love about you, you show up on a call. I've been on a number of calls with you over the last couple of years, especially through just, we'll talk a bit more about is, is Black History Month and really working together um, because of the George Floyd, you know, situation. I think it, it's it's elevated things and, and glad for that part that the conversation has been elevated. But I see you on some of these calls and sometimes you, you don't even need to say anything, but there's still such power in your presence being there. And and I just want to, again, thanks for for you. And, and that's because that's part of your legacy. It's part of why, uh, what you've done in the past really matters. And it, and it does, like, I know it brings encouragement to me. Oh, good. Garnet's here. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. You know, like, I, yeah. Honestly, it's so true. It's so true. So there, I don't know, like, I don't want to over whatever it, but there's yeah. this magnitude of who God has enabled you to be, which is really cool. And I think mm-hmm. your character and integrity and all those things are such a huge part of that. You didn't strive for this. It just sort of happened. But then I want to kind of, as we as we kind of jump in here and, and the different roles that you play and think about that is you also are a man of incredible faith and very much right. involved in a local yeah. church. 
And what I was encouraged to hear the, the, just recently is you're also teaching Sunday school. Like, yeah, I just yeah, think, love it, love it. Like, yeah. Tell me about that. Tell us about that because so, that's that's, so that's cool, you know? It, it's interesting because ever since I met the Lord uh, and gave my heart to him in 1978, March 2017, I can remember that time when he mm-hmm. came in and said, I surrender to you. Believe it or not, a teaching was always that passion. So I started teaching young adult class, catch this, three months after my, my conversion. In those days, man, you're zealous. They just throw you in. And my class on Sunday morning was just overflow with people coming to hear me. I had no clue what I was saying. I don't remember what I was saying to them, but people were coming to my class when I just got saved many years ago. And I just had this really comfort of teaching the word and just, um, just, you know, God has just really blessed me with that knowledge. And so, you know, I continued to participate in, in, in my church organization. Of course, I was part of the Church of God of Prophecy, which is a worldwide organization. And then I was, um, you know, I work in areas of evangelism, uh, in youth, in the youth department primarily. And then when I got elected, and it was it, that transition into public life, I didn't drop everything but the business of public life. I was still involved in church, but I was very, very involved in the community. Mm. I left that. So my wife consistently bugged me because she, she, she said, why don't you go teach? I said, no, I can't bother. And then I made the mistake of saying, okay, I'll do it once a month. And it's <laughs> like things just came back. And honestly, Pastor, I tried to resist because they've asked me to teach. Can you teach? I said, okay, once a month, last last Sunday of each month, I'll do it. I don't really want to get too deeply involved because I'm busy. But one of the greatest feeling, and best way to put it, I feel more like I'm really in my role. There's a joy that comes when I'm doing this thing. I told my wife, and you know, she says, yeah, I told you. And she'd say to me, like, you know, wow, you were really in your flow there. I felt it, but I didn't want to engage her in that unless I got pushed more into. So <laughs> I've been always saying, you, you, you're, you're really resisting what the Lord has for you. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I have to say, it's, it's just, a, just a joy. And, and yeah. as you know, you may not know, but I do have a, a bachelor in theology so well, as well. Well, I'm I'm not surprised. You can you can certainly you know just hear that foundation of 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 just faith and, and scripture and and yeah, that's that's awesome. You know, Garnet, as you're talking, one of the things I'm 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 thinking and just so aware of is sometimes those things that we most resist are are those things that God most blesses once we actually um, enter into them and 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 do them. And and you know, as you think about your um, your 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 work in the community, your career, even being on on council. Um, just how, as you kind of look back now at this point, and you're still very much serving your, you know, I, I like Craig Rochelle says, if if you ain't dead, you ain't done. <laughs> and, and I know you're far from dead, and you're far from done. Like you're still doing mm-hmm. lots, but 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 you you got a few years under your belt, and you've had a lot of experiences. As you look back, where where have you seen? Um, God continued to work through some of the initiatives that you were, you you've been a part of o- over the years here in the city, and and especially as we enter into Black History Month, um, you know we're really trying to focus on it over the month of February and and just not only honor that as part of this month, but really mm-hmm. as part of a life that we sure. are trying to sure. live as followers of Jesus. How can we bring that kind of equality, recognizing that things are hopefully better than they once were, but definitely not where they need to be. Um, yeah, yeah. What, what have you seen over the years as far as the way God's been working through some of the stuff that you've been well, doing? I think one of my, it's interesting, what motivated me to run for Brampton Council was just seeing how rapidly diverse Brampton was becoming and how slow Brampton leaders were to embrace mm. change and diversity. And so, the term diversity is our strength. I believe it's got to be more than just a fancy term. Mm. It has to be practical where respect is created, where respect is given, 
and the creation of an atmosphere where there's a sense of belonging to all the people, honestly. So I got motivated to run a council because that would put me into a position of leadership in our city, not so much for the bylaws and all the boring stuff, because mm -hmm. when I got into council, I realized, man, this thing is boring. Like we spent hours <laughs> debating how late somebody's dog should bark and how tall their grass should grow. And I'm figuring, man, this is it. But the platform in itself, yeah. by me being there as a leader, gave me an opportunity and gave me lots of open doors. So then I started out on that whole idea of let's work to make Brampton community be respected. I really believe that this is a community where the diversity can truly be mm -hmm. strong because it's Geographically, our city is easily defined, you know, Mayfield, yeah. you know, 407. So within the perimeter of that city, we can experiment and we get along and work together. So we started with recreational facilities. Mm. At the time, Brampton was always focused on just a few things. Recreation centers were built with hockey rink, and that was about it. And then, you know, basketball was played in the gym, and it was up to the is really to get that for you. So I came in and again, it's, you know, as a believer, we work with, with a perspective or perspective, eternal, eternal perspective, so to mm. speak, right? Mm. So we, there's a basis of godliness in us. That means we're strong, we're meek, but we're not weak. Mm. But there's wisdom because you know that you get things better when you work together with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I if I'm always in your face fighting you, that alone exhausts you. Yeah. You just don't want to bother with me. But wisdom is great, and and if you can get people to understand what you, why you do what you do, most people will accept that. So mm -hmm. we were able to go to the Brampton Soccer Center that was supposed to have been an hockey arena. <laughs> I was able to change that to to soccer and bring more basketball on the outside. So Amazing. diversity is respecting. And now today, honestly, just to answer your question, Mayor Brown is just doing an incredible job in naming parks of people of all different yeah. Yeah. groups, like something we've never seen before. And, yeah. you know, again, it's just that happens because I'm working in community, I'm able to engage and able to just engage good people. Uh, like himself, I, I can openly say he's a great guy and he's yeah. doing well and greatly intend absolutely intention to do well. And so I'm gravitated to that start, start of what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm seeing a lot of things happening that I dreamt of happening. In oh, the city. that's uh, that's that's awesome, uh, Garnet. I'm, I'm just thinking about you becoming a counselor, and and I, I think you're right. Like. Um, the diversity of our leadership um, didn't reflect the diversity of our community, and and I, we're moving, I think, in a better direction. But my my, yeah. my sense is, um, I know even in our organization, it's it's it takes time for the the diversity of the leadership sure. to really sure. reflect the diversity of the mm -hmm. whole community. Mm -hmm. um, so so wanted to kind of drill down that a little bit. What was what was because that would have been for you when you came on council then. I I, I think as I look back. Um, that that would have been was that a first for us to have a black city councilor? They had a gentleman several years before me named John Shadrach. He was an alderman. In those days, they were aldermen. Okay, yeah. So when I came on the scene, it was a little bit more of a growing Brampton, and then yeah. Brampton growing diversity. So that's why a lot of people would remember me kind of as a first. But there was. A gentleman before me, by okay. the name of Jen Shadwick, he passed away now, and he was an older man then. Yeah. But then so I'm, I'm really the second, and probably, without boasting, the most visible of them all, really, yeah. uh, in, in, in council. So I was the only face of Black person. There. As a matter of fact, I, it was so strange, and I tell you, the first time I, w I got elected, I went to my job. You know, just me heading up on the sixth floor to go to see the mayor. Mayor Fennell was mayor then. And I got tackled by a lady, man, who demanded to find out who am I? Who really? are you? What are you doing up here? 
And she was just totally in my face. And I was kind of, you know, I didn't really feel I need to explain anything. Yeah. But it was so unusual to see people of color in Brampton City Hall, a very diverse city, yeah. that even a staff wanted to know what I was doing at the sixth floor. And yeah. that was really telling. Yeah. And, and these were some of the things you noticed. And it wasn't unusual for folks to kind of look around, what are you doing? You're in your parking spot. They're figuring what you're doing in that specific parking. Did you miss the, the public parking while you're into this, you know, the exclusive parking area and so on and so forth? So it's great now just to see how the city evolved because yeah. that was the intention. I uh, frustrated in a time, figure it was slow in some areas, but it's just great to see things are changing now. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, the, the things are changing. And I guess we do continue to hear stories today of people sure. experiencing that kind of racism and and mm-hmm. and that and, and I I I um I that was one of my questions is you know, where where have you Garnet experienced racism? And 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 I guess I'd love to just open up the door for that. I think I think mm-hmm. You know, I'm. I gotta tell you, like, I, I, I can't have this conversation. I confess one more time that I just did not realize that this was still the reality of our world, our culture here, even in Brampton, right. here, even mm-hmm. in Canada, mm-hmm. as much mm-hmm. as as much as as it is. And and I'm, I'm very committed as as a white male to continue to mm-hmm. voice, be a voice, and and open the door for these conversations. And, and it seems to me one of the best places we can do is just be honest and real about, about it and then talk about how can we make change? How can we bring change? Exactly. You know, yeah. I just kind of want to open up the conversation and not not, mm-hmm. not miss this opportunity. And and so, you know, curious, Garnet, how, how you've experienced that o- over the years and, and, and if you just still do even. But then also, I, I love who you are. And my sense is, you're not someone to just let it be. Um, you're you're going to try to redeem and and bring change in a very positive way. So, you know, what have some of your experiences been, and and how do you yourself personally try to lead and work at bringing the kind of change that needs to come, so that there is um, an equality that's that's real for all of us. Right. So if 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 you're if you're in this black skin like me for over 60 years, you have a built-in mechanism to really know when you're in a racist moment. Mm. And I think a lot of black people have this situation. So not everybody who is non-black that is mean to you is racist. Mm. It's not a racist. There are jerks out there. <laughs> there are people are obnoxious. People are going to fight. You know, they're not. Like, you know that this guy's not being upset yeah. with you because yeah. of your color. Yeah. So you, you can distinguish it just like that. Yeah. Having been around is a built in mechanism that tells you what exactly is happening. And then you run into a situation where it's much more subtle and much more quiet, but you know, in a situation. But then you know it's not intended. It's Mm. implicit. The dangerous Mm. one is really what's called an implicit bias. So Mm. what do you see when you see four young black guys going down the street Mm. Mm -hmm. with a baseball bat, somebody would say, Mm. you figured you're going to a fight. Mm -hmm. Four white guys with baseball bat, they're going to play baseball. It's implicit bias. You built in, it's unconscious, and you don't even know that, but you perceive that because of the views that you have towards that particular group over years and years and years. So when you're you're faced with that situation and you walk into a room, you kind of know if people see a black guy or they see a gentleman walking in. Mm. That's, That's implicit. And then the reaction of how they deal with you. So basically, in cases like those, you you don't really need to go educate people in that situation. You got to think about the root cause of that poor individual Mm. reacting in that way, because there's no other way they're taught to react. As a leader, and as one who wants to see a better world, and you may call me crazy, but I still believe in humanity that we can mm-hmm. build a great world for my grandchildren and my mm-hmm. children. Amen. Amen. You work to dismantle the systems and the mentality that that. No, that's hard work. 
that's patience. Mm. That's hard work. That's yeah. sweat. Most people don't have time for that. I can cuss you out and I feel good and you feel bad. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't make things that make it any better. Mm-hmm. There's another one, though. If you have a chance to sit with someone, like we work together, you may want to ask that person a question. So, so not towards me, but I'll have had coworkers over the years who said to me, hey, you know, they're telling me a story. Man, you know, going to... I'm just having a conversation. I saw three black guys walking down the street, you know, they stopped by the Tim Horton and they were drinking coffee. And I said, I'm waiting as to why the color of their skin have anything to do with these three guys walking down the street. Mm. The mm. What do you see? I see three young men playing in the street, being giddy and stupid. Mm-hmm. I don't see three black guys. So when mm-hmm. you start seeing people based on their color upon an incident, then you have a problem with, mm-hmm. with color. Mm-hmm. And you actually could be considered a racist because you now are describing people based on their mm-hmm. Again, mm-hmm. that's where education comes in. Yeah. Yeah. It takes time to do so. Yeah, you know, yeah. you you face it, and then you face the overt one. You know, you you just you know you. As a matter of fact, I came to Canada in, in the seventies, right, nineteen seventy five, many years ago, and it was interesting because looking back now, I'm thinking, why did we? Why were so so funny? My brother, we would not drive our car past the police cruiser. Wow, we know we're gonna get pulled over. Mm-hmm. We would not drive a car. We're living in Toronto. That we would not drive our car past a police cruiser. And we know they're going to pull us over and they ask questions and you're on your merry way. Now you kind of realize years later, these guys were really violating your rights. But mm-hmm. we just, you become accustomed to it so much, which is a sad part of the yeah. reality. Many of yeah. the young people have come so accustomed to this kind of stuff. They accept it as being normal. So I've experienced that as a younger person living in in. in yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, thanks, Garnet, because I think the more we share these stories, the, the awareness of, of everybody, mm-hmm. regardless of the color of our skin, um, just increases and, and we realize, okay, th- that's not the way we want the world to be. Uh, and I would encourage people who are listening and, and watching to, to really, really drill down into your own personal experience of that implicit bias that Garnet just really co- talked about. Because I, th- I think you're right, Garnet, like that's so, that's so important to be aware of those things. And, and if, if you have them, it, 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 that's, that's something to be able to work on. <laughs> that's right, a place right, of prayer. Right. Why do I think that? Let's, and and, and right, yeah. God will change that over time. And, and like you said, systems and that kind of deep, deep change that needs to happen will change over, over time. But it does start with each and every one of us just checking our own guts. What, what, is our, mm-hmm. what is our own biases and why are they there? And talk about these things and let's get them out in the open so we can keep moving forward together. Um, Garnet, we we've talked about a big one here that we haven't. And just, just. Oh yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Next yeah. question is, and I, what I said before is, this is why I said to most people who are not black. If your intention is good, even if you're upset with somebody, don't think you have to be cautious because the figure is going to person going to call you racist. Most yeah. black people know the difference. If I'm a jerk on the road. Well, I don't advise you give me a finger because I don't. Well, you can yeah. shout and send a thing because I've been a jerk. I don't believe yeah. that you would be a racist. It's just a jerk driving on the street doing yeah. crazy stuff. As a human being, you react to it. So you, we just need to chill and realize that people understand the difference. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know what? And, and, and I think that's that's one of the, the blessings of 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 some of the work that's come out of the George Floyd situation, I think it's opened up the conversation where, where, where people who are white, um, like myself, and this has happened certainly for me, Garnet, I feel like I can ask these questions and, and talk about these things and not be, not be afraid of getting the, the wrong term or that you'll correct me yeah. that you'll, or we'll talk about it together and we'll laugh and yeah. no, 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 you know, and here's what, the, oh gosh, I've had it several of those where <laughs> people said to me like, do you know what that means? Oh my gosh, no, I, 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 I can't think of like a specific example right now. Maybe it doesn't matter because it's just, it's more in principle, but, but, yeah. but one, the, the acceptance and the love from my brothers and sisters who are of color um, but also the freedom that they're that this is giving me and people say who are white um, to open up the conversation, talk about it, and not feel like you get it perfect. 
um, and you're going to be judged if you don't, but we're all uh, learning. Great. We're all growing. And, and that's, God can do great stuff with that, man. Like so, so, so good. So good. Um, the leadership piece is really interesting to me. And, and I just feel like that's, that's one of the, one of the many areas where we're not quite there yet. You know, where, where I, I know we, we changed our vision. We have a, what we call a three-year vision script at our, at our church. And we actually changed it over the last few years to specifically name that we need to get more diverse in our leadership. We want to become more diverse. That takes time though. You know, it yeah, does, it takes time, it does, yeah. but what's, what's, what's like, let's talk a bit about that one. Like how, how do you see things changing, um, you know, from a, from a diversity perspective with our leadership, but also like, how, how would you encourage people to, to rethink some of these things and, and why does it matter? And, and how do we, how do we keep working at that and moving that in the right direction? Like, I love the example you gave when you were on council to, instead of saying, Hey, we need another hockey arena say, no, no, <laughs> we need a, we need a soccer center. We need a place where people can play basketball because hockey isn't necessarily though. It, it's a Canadian sport. Canada's right. changed. And we have a diversity and, you know, on and on, but, but because you had that seat, because you were a voice around that table, right. Garnet, like you could, you yeah. could bring that perspective and, you know, I'm not sure how the conversation went. I, I hope there was a sense of, oh my goodness, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Wouldn't have thought yeah. about that, but that's why you're there. That's why we need diversity in our leadership because people who are different from us think different things and are aware of things that maybe sometimes we aren't. So I guess, you know, just want to kind of chat a bit over this one, because to me, it's so important in bringing the kind of change that's required for the future. Well, you, you see that, like, okay, once you're in a position of leadership, it's, it's a tremendous privilege and opportunity, mm -hmm. especially if you have the ability to create change, you know. Diversity, again, is important. A diverse mindset, a diverse vision, it's economically, it's good, number one. You're getting a different perspective. No matter how you think you know the community, you don't know. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You know, don't think you know. I've got it down. I read this is how these people think. No, no, no. Find people from different communities who are qualified for those positions. And, and, and put them in those positions to help grow your corporation, help grow your church, help grow your business. I mm -hmm. mean, you can't go wrong if you do that, right? You got to invest. You got to invest in people. You got to encourage people. Like an example. So when I was in Brampton as a counselor, I did raise the issue of more people of color in leadership in the city of Brampton. And it's like a slow moving. I mean, and you know, when you're one guy there trying to create a yeah. soccer center, sometimes you get a few things, you give a few things. It's like, okay, you know, that's exhausting. But when we're talking about that, some of the counselors would say, um, well, we don't have people coming applying for that job. So that's a justification. And then maybe it's even a sincere justification. I said, we need to be more proactive. Mm. It's not about people coming. If I walk into my bank and I see the bank does not have any, the face that reflects the community, it's not up to the bank to say, well, we're not getting people applying for that job. Go out there in those communities and recruit. And I know Peel Police has been doing that mm -hmm. when we raise that um, issue of more black police officers who yeah. can relate to the community. They went and are recruiting bits, and they still do that for years and years, mm -hmm. trying to diversify their force. Same situation with the Brampton Fire Department. That's like the last one to drag into you know, into this situation, but they're trying to do that. So it's leadership, bringing people on board is proactive. If you notice these days on your television, you look on these commercials, just the regular commercials, yeah. McDonald's or whatever, it's very diverse. Not only are they doing that, but they know the profitability. But you know what? You're allowing people to see themselves 
in a mainstream way. Mm -hmm. In time past, when you have a black person, a commercial, it was actually more stereotypical mm -hmm. was that particular guy. He's doing something that you think, okay, that's reflective of him. Now you just see an ordinary family driving the newest Toyota, going on a camping trip. So leadership is really bringing people into the boardroom, but treat them at a level of respect where they're contributing and their contribution is accepted as viable enough to move the corporation forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're not being to you're not tokenized in them because they're brilliant enough to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've heard terms about, well, I don't know when people Usually the conversation that comes up when we say, well, we don't see more people of color. People talk about, well, we're looking for the most qualified. Qualification is not a question of most people of color being in any position. Mm -hmm. They're extremely bright, they're smart, they're qualified. You just need to open the door and give them that opportunity in your corporation and watch how it grows well and everybody will be benefited from it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Oh, thanks, Garnet. I, I love, I love that uh, that encouragement to be more proactive when we're trying to create diversity in our leadership circles. Because again, let, let's get to the root issue. Why, why would there not be applications? Well, maybe people right. have experienced racism. Maybe they don't. They don't think people would even consider them. They don't think they're right. worthy. Perhaps right. so all of that in a much deeper way. We can we can work to change and overcome as we be proactive to reach out. No, no, no. You are worthy. You you are brilliant. Please, please. Uh, apply exactly we need you yeah. to apply you you know yeah. you may not get it but we need you to apply because you are definitely where you know I, that's so good so, um i'm dying to ask you this Karen. as a as a as a person of of such deep faith how does how does your faith how does your your, your faith impact the way that you um move into this conversation the way that you look at the the um, issue around anti-black racism, the, the way that you even help try to bring change about, how does that impact all of that? How you look at it, what you dream of, but also the way that you go about it and would encourage others to as well. Right. And we did talk about, we really need to see change in this area, especially because, you know, anti-black racism still exists and we're yeah. seeing it comes to the forefront and, and the hurt and pain that it brings about the families. And for me in this role as community leaders, um, at a time when I was a counselor, you know, you could say I was a counselor for Springdale Castlemore, which is for nine and 10, but I really was a counselor for everybody, every black person around mm. them. Because folks were, you know, folks need to see somebody they can approach. Yeah. And so you hear a lot of the horror story, whether it be policing, whether it be in the school, and you see the unfairness and just the casual way in which people there's without regard to their life, their livelihood, their future, and the ways, you know, just the meanness and the casual meanness. So that needs to be dealt with. How do you go about that, dealing with that? Again, it comes back to the long. To dealing with those issues immediately, make sure people are punished for their wrongs, to change system, for example, in the school system, to make sure we have the right teachers there, make sure in policing, which are some of the problems, the areas the community has been experiencing, mm. uh, you, you, you make sure those systems are changed and uh, you get rid of the bad seeds from those. But it's easy to... You have a bad teacher, you can fire that bad teacher, but you bring a good teacher into a bad system. Mm. So I'm all about dismantling system. Mm. But I'm one of those guys who think from the perspective of uh, my faith. And number one, we've got a God who has a timeline for everyone. I'm obligated to my, my, my fellow man, I, I'm accountable to God. So I got to do everything from an eternal perspective, how I deal with you. And I believe that the wisdom is given at all times to zero in on where the deep problem is. And I think it's a matter of how you dismantle the system. One thing I believe that we need to, and I think eventually some of the initiatives today is to change that for the next generation, is the notion that one race is superior to another. Mm. That's a bad thinking. That's that's mm -hmm. 
think that supremacy mentality mm-hmm. is one of the things that we need to get rid of and eventually dismantle. So the next generation will enter in, like Martin Luther King would say, we judge each other by the content of our character. Mm-hmm. But the next group of young people would see each other for who they are, just yeah. being friends and being and we're seeing a lot of that happening. Yeah. There are always elements there to d- divide. But really to answer the question, it's a it's a long haul, it's patience, yeah. it's working with system, it's mm-hmm. to position yourself in a place where you're influenced to make decisions. And if you can be there, you support good people to be in there mm-hmm. and in those places. And I believe as we bring leadership mm-hmm. in, in, mm-hmm. in key areas of our community. Uh, we will begin and with intention for change and community continue to push, we will definitely see that happen. And that's why for me, I stand strong in my faith, but I stand strong in my advocacy yeah. as a community leader to see change. And yeah. I can do that without having to take up a sword and fight you. I just got to fight with every other thing I have except mm. violent approach. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. Amen. Amen. You know, it's it's amazing. Um, because the word justice has been just so much more a part of my um, my world the last several years. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing it in scripture all the time. I can, mm-hmm. Almost mm-hmm. every morning I'm doing my devotions and, you know, the mm-hmm. Bible's talking about justice and a God who mm-hmm. loves justice. And this mm-hmm. is an issue around justice and God will mm-hmm. see it through um, and we'll all play our role if we're, we're open to that. Oh, Garnet, man, I... I love you. I love you so much. I do, I do. Uh, yeah. Thank you for who you are and, 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 and all that you have done and are doing. And it just, it's such a blessing to share our life together. Um, I, I just love to close. If I could, we got this little rapid fire thing we want to do because you know, it's the good news podcast. We want to mm-hmm. kind of just end on some good news. And so, you know, three rapid fire questions, kind of like just a quick little answer for each one. What's yeah. the best thing going on these days in your home, in your family? My daughter is law school. Nice, nice. My awesome. daughter is in law school. She finally realized her goal to be in law school, and she she just started first year in law school. Oh, that is so cool! That is so cool. Okay, what's the best thing going on in your neighborhood, in your community? You know, again, just just having guys like you talking about the future and just talking of just enjoying people yeah. and loving people and meeting good people. You know, we're, we're really turning the curve, man. There's yeah. a lot of folks out there who are hopeful. Well, you you do it well, my man. You do it well. Okay, last one. What's the best thing you see going on in our world these days? I would say that um, the lessons we're learning from COVID. Yeah, yeah. That we are not in control. Mm. God is in control. Yeah. I yeah. really believe it's time right now, Pastor. Yeah. Always is time. Yeah. But it's so 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 much defined. Yeah. That's where my my hope is. Amen. Amen. Totally, totally, totally agree. Hey, well, um, thanks again, Garnet. Maybe, maybe that's a great place for us to pray to close here because we got lots we talked about that's worth praying for. Yeah, for sure. Let's pray. Yeah. 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 Oh, God, thank you so much for, thank you, Lord. for Garnet, for his family, for, uh, for his daughter. We celebrate that good news. It's, she's going to become a, 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 an incredible force through that role of being a lawyer. We, we have no doubt. We, um, I love where we ended here today after a really deep conversation on a topic that that matters so much. We want to continue to bring change, to to bring reconciliation and justice. You are a god of justice, and sometimes it can be it can be challenging work. Sometimes we can get impatient because it's it's not though though. Hopefully, we've come a long way. There's still a long way to go, and and so as we work towards that, give us a resiliency and a patience and an ability to keep working at it. And to trust that you are going to see this through. You're going to see us through to open up the conversations, to change the systems, to look at those implicit biases, whatever it might be, and see you, trust you in in it all. So thank you again for this opportunity to have this conversation. We pray for each listener that they'll be inspired and challenged in whatever ways you need to happen and just entrust it all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Blessings. Blessings. Thanks, Garner, Thank so much again for this this amazing conversation. Love it, love it. Yeah, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Appreciate you as always, and hopefully we'll see each other in person very soon. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. And everyone, Thank thanks so much for joining the Good News Podcast today. God bless you and be with you, and may you continue the work that we've talked about here today, because we are definitely in it together. 
God bless everyone. Well, friends, one of the things I love about these podcasts is you just really never know where the conversation is going to go. Let's call it the Holy Spirit at work, perhaps. But man, with Garnet, like, I love, I love that one piece where he said, you know, sometimes people are just jerks. <laughs> They're not racist. And, and I thought that was a really helpful reflection. I love the way he broke down where he's experienced racism, not just to categorize one, people into one category, but to really think about why they're doing what they're doing, implicit bias. Some may be explicitly doing these kinds of things. So you know, I thought that was really helpful for him to break it down like that. And, and then I, I didn't realize that the soccer center, the Brampton Soccer Center, which is, which is one of the, the most amazing places in our city, really came about because of Garnet's influence when he was on council. So that was awesome to hear. It also reminded me why it's so important for all of us to consider having diversity around our leadership tables, because that's the kind of thing that can and will happen as we do. So lots to think about, lots to act on. Um, let's uh, continue to move forward together, friends. Thanks so much for being a part of the conversation today. Next week, don't miss it, we're gonna be talking to Gwyn Chapman. Gwyn has got tons to say, and she's full of full of creativity and, and faith when we talk about what it means to move forward and bring equality. So hope you can join us with Gwyn Chapman next week. Friends, thanks again for being part of the Good News family. Don't forget to join us on Instagram, Good News with Jamie Holton. God bless you. Hope to see you again soon.